Good morning, Moodlers. Welcome to the My Learning Space webinar, Moodle and the Cloud. This webinar will aim to de demonstrate the use of the Moodle repository plugins to share media and content. I'm Shalona Anush, Client Services Manager for My Learning Space and the moderator of this session. The webinar itself will be presented by our resident Moodle expert, Chad Uten. Before we get started, I would like to point out that this session will be recorded. Additionally, if you have any questions through the presentation, please type them into the chat window and we will attempt to include them in the session. Ideally, please save your questions for the end of the webinar where we will endeavour to get through them. Now all that said, please sit back and I will hand you over to Chad. Thanks Shalona and g'day Moodlers. Welcome to Moodle and the Cloud. More precisely, uh, we're here to learn about the repository plugins for Moodle version 2. Okay, a quick heads up in terms of where we're heading uh, for the next half hour or so. There's a lot of buzz and hype around this thing called the cloud. Uh, but what is it and what might it mean for us as online educators? We'll explore those two questions. That conversation leads naturally into a new function in Moodle 2.0 known as uh, the Moodle repository. It's an interface that makes it easy to share content and media from third party sites and services. So we'll aim to demonstrate how that can be done and naturally take some questions along the way. Okay, perhaps we'll start with a quick poll of our audience. Which sites or services have you used this month? Google Docs, Gmail, YouTube and Flickr. And you can make multiple selections as we push that poll to you now. We'll leave it open for 15 to 20 seconds. Thank you as those results are coming in. And we'll close the quiz, uh, the, the poll rather, in a moment. And the results. Okay, interestingly, uh, the majority of us, over 75%, are using Google Docs and Gmail. About half of us, YouTube this month, and Flickr, about a quarter of the participants. Well, it's fair to say that all of these services are in fact cloud-based. They're, uh, they're popularizing. And uh, in essence, uh, cloud-based services such as these are all about data and applications stored on the internet, not locally on your computer or local area network. So this notion of the cloud, so it's the concept of computing delivered as a service. So it is really software as a service, and it also involves resources and information provided to users and their devices via the internet. So, uh, I mean, historically speaking, uh, in computer network diagrams, as a matter of fact, uh, the cloud is uh, often used to depict um, the internet. So the cloud is the perfect metaphor, in fact, for the internet. It's no surprise uh, it would be called that. Um, so it is all about software as a service, uh, not as a product. And it's a real distributed computing model. The notion that resources and information data may in fact be shared across a multiplicity of servers or computers it doesn't reside on one physical dedicated piece of hardware and that's unimportant uh, we just need to know that our, our data or our applications or information um, is available um, when we're connected to the internet regardless of where we are so if i had to draw you a pretty picture of cloud computing it'd likely look something like this Cloud contains applications, information, and services. You can see some examples of them there. Uh, in fact, documents, spreadsheets, presentations, email, calendaring, and contact applications, multimedia, and web-based gaming. Now, these applications and information and services, they're built upon technologies and uh, infrastructures for the internet. 
and uh, users send and receive information to and from the cloud through various computing devices. So they could be desktops, laptops, tablets, smartphones, etc. Where the conversation gets interesting is the Moodle repository. In a nutshell, the, the repository is Moodle's way of connecting to these cloud-based services. It's the interface whereby its users, so that's us uh, as educators and, and learners, uh, we can go beyond basic file uploads into an online Moodle course. Okay, we can also share content and media from a variety of third-party sites. What is important, however, before we can do that in Moodle 2 is that the LMS administrator has enabled and configured the repository plugins. So when the time comes uh, and we're in a course looking to add content or media, we use uh, this new feature referred to as the file picker. It's, uh, it's the new metaphor, in fact, for sharing content via Moodle, and we'll see that in a short while. Uh, we'll be able to insert images, media, uh, or attach files. Okay. So as far as some of these repository plugins are concerned for Moodle, uh, here's, here's a snapshot. It's, it's by no means an exhaustive list of the plugins, uh, but these are some of the more noteworthy. Um, one of the latter slides in the presentation here um, will reference each of these services and you're, you're free to explore them at your leisure. I'll, I'll briefly uh, just make mention of each of them to give you the heads up. Alfresco is an open source content management system. Amazon, BoxNet and Dropbox, they are cloud-based file storage solutions. Flickr and Picasa are photo sharing sites. Google Docs is a collaborative web-based solution uh, for documents, spreadsheets, presentations and web forms. Wikimedia is a Creative Commons multimedia repository. It's a sister project of Wikipedia. And YouTube is a cloud-based video sharing site. So uh, as far as this diagram is concerned, um, we've got uh, Moodle, I guess, at the center of, of all of this. And um, connected to it, uh, toward the, the bottom there, we've got the new file system architecture. And um, the Moodle users, they could be administrators, teachers, and learners. So uh, those elements, uh, in essence, um, interact and it is all about importing uh, or pulling content from these third-party sites up in the cloud to uh, an online Moodle course okay um, it's, w it's worth mentioning however uh, this process does uh, work in reverse um, via the portfolios plugin um, but that's perhaps a conversation for another day Okay, time for a demo. So I've logged into a plain vanilla local instance of Moodle 2.1. Um, on the front page is an administrator. As far as configuring and enabling these repository plugins is concerned, your LMS administrator needs to go to the settings block Site Admin, Plugins, Repositories, Manage Repositories. We get presented with a variety of repositories, most of which are disabled and not visible by default. Uh, the top four, Server Files, Recent Files, Uploader File, and private files um, ought to be enabled and visible. The others need to be enabled and configured. Uh, I've, I've done that already, just to save a little bit of time today um, with some of these other repository plugins. But to give you an example of how it, how it may in fact work, um, there's one of these disabled. Uh, it will typically involve the administrator enabling it and making it visible. 
and then saving the subsequent page. Uh, in this case, uh, with the, the Amazon S3 repository plugin, uh, you're actually required to visit the said third party site and get a public and a private key. And that'll take about 60 seconds. Uh, you're not donating an organ. Uh, it's quick and easy. You grab those keys, you would um, copy and then paste them into uh, the fields here, save, and then that plugin should be available to users in the courses. Okay. Um, I guess it's worth mentioning as well with these uh, repository plugins, uh, they are generally, if they're saved and configured, they will generally be, be site-wide or global. So that'll be a single instance. Uh, you can also have, uh, for some of them at least, course-wide and or private instances of these um, repository plugins. And uh, they, Again, when they're enabled and visible, uh, the, the administrator can make that decision then and there. Okay, look, let's go into a course and see a few of these in action. So this is a this is a, a brand new course. Uh, we can see we've got one learning object given to us by default. It's a news forum. It's where we make general news and announcements. So let's go in there and add a new topic. So I'm giving our discussion topic its mandatory subject and message. Down the bottom here, we can attach a file to this forum post. So people will read this. Um, it being in news and announcements, uh, they, they well, certainly learners won't be able to respond, but uh, we can certainly attach files if appropriate. So we click add. And we get this uh, this dialog popping up, this is the file picker. And we can see on the left side here, we've got a variety of options from server files, recent files that uh, well, I have, uh, as a user have been working with in Moodle. I could upload a file, or I could, uh, I could call on a private file that I'd uploaded earlier, and it was for my eyes only, and I've decided to make it public or visible to other Moodle users. We've got a file system, which uh, again, if this file path is uh, mapped correctly, uh, be it a, a network uh, or, a, or a server drive, uh, we could FTP uh, documents and media to a said uh, directory, and learners could uh, and teachers for that matter, access the files there, they could pick the files and add them to places such as discussion forums. We talked about some of these other cloud-based services. Let's, we'll run with Google Docs on this occasion. Uh, it would require that I would have a Google Docs account and it would um, typically ask me to log in. I've, um, I've been there um, a little while back, so uh, I'm logged in already and I would select the file, it could be a document, a presentation or perhaps a piece of media, um, I'm going to import or copy this into the Moodle course. So it's got a name, an author, and I choose the license, be it all rights preserved, public domain, or creative commons. Select the file. And post to forum. So other course participants will be able to read this message, general news and announcements, and um, access the file attached to it. So whether it's a case of opening it, saving it, printing it, etc. So that's our first look at the repositories plugin and uh, the file picker. Let's turn editing on, So because there are in fact a couple other ways we can go about uh, adding media and content to our Moodle courses. All right, editing on, add a resource, let's choose page. Now if you're using Moodle 1.9 or earlier, you would be familiar with two options in this menu uh, along the lines of um, a text page or a web page. A page, um, you know, 
removes any ambiguity. So we select it. We'll give this resource a name and a description. In the next field is where we put our page content. One of the new features of Moodle 2 is this HTML editor. It's a new HTML editor and it's uh, supported by a, a larger range of web browsers, which is good. Um, this little icon here, the tree, allows us to insert an image. So we click that and if we knew the web address, we could simply enter the image URL and its description, or else we click the button here that reads find or upload an image. So we get our file picker again, and the options as we see. So again, depending which of these repository plugins have been enabled and configured and are appropriate for when we're looking to insert an image, and that's not all of them. Uh, Google Docs, for example, is not on this list at the moment, nor is YouTube. So let's go Flickr public. Um, that would be the one to use um, most certainly if uh, you didn't have a Flickr account and, uh, and or you weren't intending to um, necessarily import or pull a file from, uh, from your own account, but one from the, I guess, the, the, public, the public stream. So we've chosen Flickr public and we would run a keyword search or a tag search and see what results we get. You can see it was a pretty general query and I've got a hell of a lot of results. So I would need to be um, more specific than that if I'm going to find exactly what I'm looking for. In the case, I'll select this and let's just presume uh, I either own the file or uh, I've been given the express permission of the author to make use of this file under a given license. Um, that, that's the key essence here. So I'll select that file. You get a preview of it and we could go into the appearance tab if we wanted to adjust its alignment, dimensions and spacing. I'll simply insert. Uh, the image into the page, like so, save and display. So you get an idea here in terms of how this might work with a, with a Moodle page resource. We could have a variety of stylized text, uh, hypertext, um, you know, and we can embed uh, media, images in particular like this quite quickly. And these resources are date and timestamp, which is quite use, uh, useful as well. So we'll return to the course page. Editing still on. Let's add an activity this time, and we're going to add a glossary. So we'll just enter the mandatory name and description. Glossaries are typically used um, you know, as a course based dictionary or a compilation of key concepts or language that learners. Um, need to be familiar with. So we've set that up, we now need to add an entry. So let's say the concept will be repositories and we could define that as, uh, let's say, it's the Moodle, it's a Moodle 2 plugin. Um, share content and media from third party sites. Okay, so we've got some text there as part of the explanation and definition of this concept in, in the seed glossary. Um, with reference to the HTML editor, um, this little film strip icon allows us to insert or embed media um, from cloud-based services. So we click it, uh, the dialogue is slightly different here. Um, 
we find or upload a sound video or applet. So this isn't, um, naturally we're not looking to upload uh, or insert an image or a document. So we get our file picker. Again, the options here um, in the file picker pane will vary depending um, which repository plugins have been enabled, configured, and are appropriate for inserting Moodle Media. So we see uh, Wikimedia, for example, and YouTube, because we could grab video from either of those sites, most certainly. So let's say YouTube. And we search videos again, keyword search. So we get some results here. There's not a lot of results. In fact, our search was quite specific. We select the, uh, the appropriate video. Again, you get the option here to uh, rename the file, um, the author, and choose the license. So select that file, you get a preview. Let's insert it into the, uh, the definition area there. So if we save changes, we'll get to see how this looks. So it's served up quite nicely on a Moodle page, hasn't it, in a, uh, a skin or a media player. So we could view the video here. It contains audio as well. Um, or alternatively, we could go full screen or uh, watch, watch the video on YouTube in, uh, in, in the available resolutions. All right. The thing I like about embedding um, media from third-party sites such as YouTube and Flickr in your Moodle pages um, is, is, you know, you, I guess you're better able to moderate uh, the content. Uh, the moment you send your learners to these third-party sites and services to view the videos and the images there, for example, uh, you, you tend to be at the mercy of um, people you don't know and, and at times the crude comments that they might leave. So bear that in mind. We're actually, we're um, we're referencing that content and just embedding it in a player uh, within your Moodle course. Now, if you've tried to do what I've just demonstrated there with your, your video, uh, YouTube for example, and it's not, um, it's not displaying as it, as it ought to, you might want to check a couple of things. I'll give you a quick heads up. Um, through the eyes of the administrator, you'd want to go to the settings block, site administrator, Plugins, filters, manage filters. Filters um, control the way that Moodle pages are displayed. Okay, and none of these are enabled by default. Incidentally, um, one that we are interested in enabling is multi the multimedia plugins. Um, this filter in particular. So we've set it as uh, it's active. It's on. Um, over in the settings, there's various multimedia plugins for uh, this particular filter. So we've enabled virtually all of those, YouTube, Vimeo, Vimeo is another video sharing site, um, you know, MP3, Flash Video, HTML5, Audio and Video, okay? And there's a few legacy players as well. So um, just bear in mind, um, not all of those uh, multimedia plugins are enabled by default, so um, it may not uh, not be enough to simply enable the multimedia filter. You have to come in here and check a few boxes. Is what I'm saying. Um, we've left .swf uh, files um, as disabled. What does happen um, from time to time is um, well, you know, there's the the possibility of someone with malintent could inject malicious code uh, via said files into your Moodle. So, um, you know, it's it's not advised or recommended from a security point of view that you enable SWF. Um, if you if your flash videos aren't playing, uh, you may in fact want to um, enable that filter and see if it makes a difference. If it doesn't, uh, the other thing you can check. Uh, via your site admin, security, site policies uh, will be 
the allowing of embed and object tags and enabling trusted content. Other than that, um, if, if these videos don't display on a Moodle page, the issue is either server related or it could be, it could be at the, uh, you know, the end user side in their environmental settings, their browser, uh, the version of browser uh, and settings and the plugins they do or don't have. All right, so that's about as much as I wanted to show um, with respect to repositories. Um, I might just go back to the course and I'll take um, any questions that might come to hand. Um, I could see a few things there that have been mentioned in the in the chat window, uh, one of which is with, with respect to version control. Um, so what happens there when, um, when we insert you know, a document from Google Docs or Flickr, for example. Um, in essence, what, what we're doing is creating a second copy of those files. Okay, so we're pulling it, we're importing it uh, from the cloud service into your Moodle course. Um, so what that means is if the document up in Google Docs um, is updated, those changes aren't reflected, as far as I understand, in the in the Moodle file, that's a separate copy. Okay, it might be a might be a future or a uh, you know future feature or a feature request that you uh, that you uh, might want to put in. Uh, but I, I don't think it's it's a single version. So you've got versioning control um, considerations there. Um, another question along the lines of: Do learners need login accounts to these? Um, cloud services to make use of the repositories plugin? Uh, the answer there varies, it, it does really depend. If if it's simply us as teachers or admins sharing documents and media with them uh, via Moodle, absolutely not. The, the learners don't need logins to any of these sites of services. We, we're simply sharing a copy of these, um, you know, these said files with them uh, you know, in the Moodle environment. Uh, if, however, you want to uh, you know, empower your learners and have them sharing and getting social and, and collaborating and contributing. I'd encourage that. I think that's part of the philosophy of plugins. Um, they really, they do need login accounts to you know, Google Docs and Flickr and, and so forth. So they can log into their account, grab their files and make a Moodle, Moodle copy of them. Um, okay, um, I think that is just about it. Um, I'm going to, there's no other questions coming through there. Um, there's the resources from today's presentation. Feel free to explore those at your leisure. And I'll hand back to Shalona so she can wrap things up. Thanks, Chad. Thanks for another great session. Thank you, Moodlers, for participating in today's webinar presented by My Learning Space. We trust this session has been of benefit to you. If you'd like to learn more about Moodle 2.0 and its functionalities or any of our expert services, please feel free to contact us. If you have any further questions, please ask them now. To everyone, we look forward to seeing you again in our future webinars and happy Moodling.